Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is Lesson 10.4, Classify Quadrilaterals. Our essential question for tonight is how can you sort and classify quadrilaterals? Please write this essential question down at the top of your notes. How can you sort and classify quadrilaterals? A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four angles. Now remember, these are our sides and our angles right here. You can see I have an obtuse, acute, obtuse, acute. So a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four angles. Now you can name a quadrilateral by the vertices of its angles. So let's look at this one, for example. I see that it has line AB and line segment CD are parallel to one another and they're the same length. And then I have line segment BC and line segment AD. They too are parallel to one another and they also are the same length. So we'll be figuring out what this quadrilateral is later on. In your notes I want you to write down the word trapezoid. And I want you to draw as close as possible a picture of two different types of trapezoids that I have here. Now what classifies a trapezoid is that it has one pair of parallel sides. I want you to write that down in your notes. Trapezoid. It only has one pair of parallel sides. That is what makes it a trapezoid. So look at this first example. Do you see how I have four line segments? which makes it a quadrilateral, but it's a trapezoid because it has one pair of parallel sides. Do you see how the top line segment is parallel to the bottom line segment? But my two side line segments are not parallel to one another because if they kept going, they would eventually intersect. Now, if you look at the second example, it too has one pair of parallel sides. My top line is parallel to the bottom line. They will never cross. But if you look at my, this right angle right here, if you look at this line segment and this line segment, they're not parallel because eventually if they continued, they would definitely intersect. Therefore, this is a trapezoid, these two examples, because there's one pair of parallel sides. Make sure you write this down in your notes. Now the second type of quadrilateral I'm going to talk to you about is called a parallelogram. Now if you look at this parallelogram, it has two pair of parallel sides, write that down in your notes, and it also has two pair of sides of equal length. As you can see, I made little markings right here to show that these two sides are parallel to one another and they're of equal length. And then the two horizontal lines, they're also parallel to one another and they are sides of equal length. Therefore, this would qualify to be a parallelogram because it has these two separate attributes, two pair of parallel sides and two pair of sides of equal length. Please make sure you have these two notes written down for parallelogram and sketch out an example of a parallelogram with your notes. Now the third term I'm going to teach you is called a rhombus. Now a rhombus has two pair of parallel sides just like in the parallelogram. But the four sides are of equal length. So we would say that these two sides are parallel. They'll never cross. And these two sides also are parallel. They'll never cross with one another. However, all four sides are going to be equal length. And this is why I have this little marking right here to show that they're all the same length. They all have the length in common. So we would call this a rhombus because it has two pair of parallel sides. My vertical lines are parallel and the horizontal are parallel. And then my four sides are of equal length. One, two, three, four. That is what a rhombus is. Make sure you write these two facts down. You may need to pause the video to do that. Now the fourth quadrilateral that I'm going to teach you about is called a rectangle. Now a rectangle has three special attributes. It has two pair of parallel sides, just like with our 
rhombus, and just like with our parallelogram, do you see how it has two pair of parallel sides? A rectangle also has two pairs of sides of equal length, just like in our parallelogram. Do you see how these two are parallel, my horizontal lines? And my vertical lines are also parallel. Now what makes a rectangle a rectangle is that it has to have four right angles. Now to remember in our parallelogram slide, we did not have four right angles. They had two acute and two obtuse. This tells me that a rectangle has four right angles, but a parallel, not all parallelograms do have four right angles. So a rectangle can be a parallelogram because it has two pair of parallel sides and has two pair of sides of equal length, just like our parallelogram. But a rectangle makes it a rectangle when it has four right angles. So the last shape I'm going to show you on a quadrilaterals will be square. Now you recognize this shape from when you were in kindergarten. However, I'm going to talk to you about why it's a square. What constitutes it to be a square is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. Do you see how my vertical lines are parallel and my horizontal lines are parallel? But what also makes a square a square is that the four sides are of equal length, just like in our rhombus. So if you just look at my top two attributes, two parallel parallel sides and four sides of equal length, that sounds just like the rhombus because a square technically can be a rhombus because it has two pair of parallel sides and four sides of equal length. However, not all rhombuses will be squares because a true square has to have four right angles. So notice how this square has a right angle here, 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 and here. Therefore, it makes it a square. So make sure you have these three points written down for what makes a square. Okay, so here are your homework questions for tonight. I want you to remember everything we wrote down about what makes each type of quadrilateral what it is, and then I want you to classify each figure as many ways as possible. If it's a quadrilateral, please write down the word quadrilateral. If it's a trapezoid, write down trapezoid. If it's a parallelogram, write down parallelogram. If it can be a rhombus, make sure you write the word rhombus down. If it's a rectangle, write rectangle. And if it's a square, you can write square. Now remember, some of these items might appear with more than one word. So you may want to go back to your list of what makes each item what it is, which type of quadrilateral is which. And then you can list them for A, B, and C. For question two, I want you to explain how a rhombus and a square are alike. What do they have in common? But also I want you to list how they're different. What makes a rhombus a rhombus and what makes a square a square? For our last question, number three, I want you to answer either A, B, C, or D for this question. Which figure can ha never have two pair of parallel sides? After you've answered these three questions, make sure that you assess yourself. List number one, two, three, or four, depending on how you feel about your understanding of the different types of quadrilaterals. If you feel like you're a novice or apprentice, remember you're more than welcome to go back and rewatch this video again to remember what makes which type of quadrilateral the way it is. If you're a practitioner, you really understand each type of quadrilateral, Go ahead and put down number three if you could do it by yourself, but you may need to look at your notes every now and then. And number four, expert. You know every single type of quadrilateral there is and what makes it what it is. List number one, two, three, or four in the corner of your notes where you rate yourself. And then I want you to uh, make sure that you check over each of your answers for homework, bring them back to class tomorrow, and we will go over them together. So here are your homework questions again. Make sure you pause the video to work them out. And make sure you have a good night tonight and bring your notes with you tomorrow in class. And we'll see you tomorrow.